if you don't mind, like you, you're you're very open with your community and you're very open with uh, you know who you are, you know, to a certain degree. I mean, it's right. not TMI. But right. um, what is what is one trait or skill or experience that your community does not know about you? Simply because they have not asked. Oh, because they have not asked. Okay. Yes. Oh, I had something like this once. Okay. You know, like one of those when people ask you, you know, what do you want for your birthday or Christmas? And you're yeah. like, um, let's see. My community knows that. So there's one I do, um, but they kind of know about it. It's actually what got me started in some of this. Right. Um, I used to paint Nerf Blasters. I played this game in college and a little bit past called Humans vs. Zombies. Giant game of Nerf Tag. Okay. Um, I have one of the blasters, I think, over here. Uh, let me see. So I used to do this, but there's, I'm trying to think if there's there's something bigger and better that I do that people don't know about. But, like, this is a, one of the Nerf blasters that I've painted. That is, um, that is beautifully like done. This. Yeah. It's not, it's not completed yet, but this is they, it's one of the rewards they get on stream. But it's, cool. very, it's a very rare reward. Um, they have to work for it. What's something that they don't know I do? I can tell you all the pet peeves. <laughs> <laughs> sure uh, let's, let's go with pet peeves what's I your go with pet peeves. yeah yeah um except repetitive things okay. cannot stand repetitive things i find i'm a dad with lights like what you know like why are we air conditioning the neighborhood sort of thing why are oh we lights on? yeah yeah fair enough like yeah. you leave a room turn off the lights <laughs> yeah. oh swing dancing i can swing dance you can swing um, dance. I can swing dance. Yeah. I w have been swing dancing since I was in high school. Oh. Yeah. I continue doing it. So my friends and I were kind of like, it was, so it was part of that homecoming thing, that spirit week. Right. Um, they would teach us before uh, the homecoming dance and everything like the day before and you'd get extra points and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they would teach us, they bring in a swing dance instructors and they would teach us how to do different dances. So when people get on the floor, they're not like one dancing in ways right. um two uh not like the stick straight like, yeah 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 yeah. yeah. enough there room for the holy ghost yeah yes. yeah <laughs> oh holy ghost jesus and then some yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh so my friends and i were just nerdy enough that we went hey let's uh let's go swing dancing on you know at this place on sunday nights and learn how to do it and so i did that and um uh yeah so I, I was swing i've been swing dancing since then and in college i took like as a like a leisure one of my like easy little gen eds leisure study things mm -hmm. um a dancing class um and i got uh had a couple dance partners where i learned like salsa he was a a, a latin dancer okay. so he knew like salsa uh, merengue bachata tango and so we were also in the middle of like nowhere in because I went to Oklahoma State, um, so it's country, very country. So right. we would go to the bars and we would practice and stuff. And so he's doing Latin dancing, I'm doing swing dancing. We're working it out together to country songs. <laughs> Just this big old <laughs> so hybrid. <a> broad spectrum. <laughs> Broad, broad spectrum and so yeah we would practice and we would do like aerials and stuff like that and throws and um so yeah i think swing dancing i've i've mentioned every now and then but it's like it's a really big um part of me um that a lot of people i guess don't see often that's so cool that, that yeah. is like an incredible skill too like so oh, yeah like um, you can name off moves and positions and transitions I could, and... yeah yeah i'm not like i'm super amazing no. at it because like i would only go every now and then and i want to keep going back but right now with with work and everything it's it's a little harder but yeah like my main one is uh what is it um east coast i like east coast dancing okay which is it's a really easy dance it's like left step or left right rock step back that's the basic Okay. And then I, f we do what we call freestyle. So we just throw in things that we see and I tap. And so I've been told I have a little bit more of a, a jive type of dance. Very cool. Um, and I just pick up from a bunch of different dance partners I've been with and, uh, and do, do that. And, uh, so when, when I get dance instructors, that get up to me, they're like, you're, <laughs> you're there, but you're also doing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Frankenstein. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. don't 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 overthink it. I'm not. <laughs> that is so but, cool. Yeah. 
the only thing that would even remotely hint at uh at your ability to dance or even uh -huh. specifically in swing dance is, is mm -hmm. just how you carry yourself. You have good form. Mm -hmm. Also, your hair yeah. is just stunning. So oh, yeah. I can, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I, I believe it. I honestly believe it. But like, I, I could honestly, like now that you mention it, like I could see you mm -hmm. in the outfit with that beautiful hair yeah. of yours and just being able yeah. to move fluently. So yeah. that's the only thing, but that's yeah. a great answer. Oh yeah. No, cause I played sports. I mean, I played college sports. I played in, you know, I had, little boast here i had a chance so i was going to play for the national team um the u17 national team for the women's soccer here okay um i was going to go and play in austria at some of their tournaments this was before i went into college mm. had everything all set up was good to go and um then the i think it was the ncaa got in well the the person who was the coach was also the a a, a college coach and there was like a conflict of interest. They they pulled this conflict of interest card. He it could be deemed as him recruiting, like because uh, there's rules behind how you can recruit and stuff. Right. Um. And so they uh, they said you can't be a part of this anymore. And they brought in somebody new. Well, then the somebody new had people who they wanted, and so I didn't get into it. But I was like, uh, I, was, I was so frustrated. I was yeah. Like, oh, so throwing in like the fancy feet work with that to dancing yeah that's so cool yeah. that's awesome good so, for you yeah thank you what is something that your fans and your audience doesn't know about you simply because they just haven't asked do you have a special skill or ability or do you have a hobby that is just like something that someone wouldn't expect hmm that is a fun question something that my fans haven't even asked me they ask me a lot of questions. <laughs> I believe it. Okay, this is a random deep cut about me. Um, I won a cornbread contest when I lived in Arkansas. Like I made, cause I, <laughs> I have like a, a, I have a family recipe for cornbread and I like made it and I won and I like entered, I got into the state cornbread festival. Okay. So I like, was a serving my cornbread at the Arkansas State Cornbread Festival, which is, and I got, I got like free merch and everything. I have an apron that says Arkansas Cornbread Festival. That's so, so yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I mentioned that to people. They're like, they're very, I don't know. They just look at me and they're like, oh, <laughs> like you, I would not expect that from you. So you, you, you were able to create champion level cornbread. Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is awesome. Absolutely awesome. Cool. Yeah, I've spoken about it. I, I have two things. Mm -hmm. I've spoken about it. I'm real. I can't play music worth a damn, but I'm really into music. I think. I think. Like, I listen to it constantly. I always have like my Spotify running. Whenever, basically, any time, no matter what video game I'll play, I'm be playing where like it may be important to listen to like footsteps and stuff like that. I don't care. I just always have music blaring. Right. And uh, so, and I don't play any of it on stream, so people don't really get a taste of it, but I recently created a music recommendation channel on my Discord to kind of share it around. And like, and people often ask me what my favorite like metal bands are. Hmm. And I hate metal. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do not like it. I don't know. It was just like growing up, we listened to a lot of genres in the house, from country to rock and all the sorts of different stuff. But it's like I could I never got into it, so I'm just like not a fan. It's like the one genre I don't listen to. Metal. And metal. But but people always assume that for some reason. I think that's really strange. And then they're always shocked when I tell them that my number one uh genre that I listen to by far, it is like not close, is R&B and hip hop. I adore r and I don't know why. I don't know what in my brain, because no one else in my family likes it either. It's, like, it's, it's literally just me. I don't know what happened, but I just really like got into, I remember hearing a thing where it was like when you're like 14 or 15, your musical tastes like solidify mm. and for some reason i was just like on an r&b hip-hop train mm. and like that's just what i listen to where i listen to other stuff but it's like that's definitely that's what i've been listening to this entire interview <laughs> oh okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so you know it's just it's just been running and, uh, <laughs> yeah so that's 
that's one thing sure is that like i don't talk about it often but i don't think a lot of people assume whether it be like stereotype or like off my voice or stuff i joke about and stuff but like i like really listen to a lot of r&b and a lot of hip-hop and it's like it's definitely not something people expect or people ask about yeah and uh that that's probably the big one the second thing I don't know. I I guess it's not something that people don't ask about. I think that music one really is is the big one. Mm. I think the second thing that really kind of came to mind was just that like I am so inspired and I feel so good. Like I get such a emotional like boom in my soul whenever I get to talk to people that are from a similar situation as myself where it's like people and i've get i've gotten like fans from streaming i have mods and stuff that are from like the middle of nowhere oh yeah and in the middle of nowhere it's like there's a hundred people in a hometown and i don't even live in town i live a couple miles outside of town on a farm right like literally like you're in the middle of nowhere like town doesn't have a post office so it's legally considered a village like (laughs) type situation (laughs) right yeah and i think it's really cool to be able to talk to people in a similar situation and be like if i can do it other people can do it because whether it be economically or politically or any reason a lot of people in the middle of nowhere feel not i wouldn't say marginalized but overlooked Mm. because it's like you don't have a lot of voting power so like representatives don't really care about you and you don't have a lot of like economic draw because there's not a lot of opportunities for jobs so people who normally grow up here move out like quickly Mm. which i understand Mm. and all this other stuff so it's like when people are like hey i'm from iowa too in like a town in the middle of nowhere it's like it's super cool to be able to kind of represent that where it's like normally in our group and also in media or video game characters or movies or whatever it's always like you know if you're american it's like texas new york california it's like those three parts and then it's like I'm very proud and very happy and incredibly willing to rep the middle of nowhere that just has like cornfields and people that work much harder than I do on, on stuff like that. Like my dad spent decades getting up at like four in the morning and working like 12 hours on like construction and shit, just like going at it. Yeah. So I am so incredibly juiced to be doing stuff like that where it's like like one of my emotes on Twitch is just the state of Iowa and like my the points on Twitch about corn yes. and just <laughs> like people were talking about like Siege was running a thing where if you're a streamer you can get a charm in the game that represents you and it's like I would people were asking me what i would want if i did it it's like i would just want the state of iowa it's like i don't even want to do it inherently for me i just want to do it for like <clears throat> for the people that are like in the middle of nowhere so, yeah, so yeah. i don't know it's uh that's one thing that i don't bring up often but occasionally where it's like i am so like happy to not even represent myself but more so just represent where the you people that where i'm from and, and the people that don't really get representation on other stuff and it's not even representation in the sort of like in a diversity quota or diversity in any way it's more just like like you're in like the peak of flyover states yeah so like you don't really get like exposure on stuff other than like field of dreams which i've been to (laughs) and uh (laughs) they sell they sell uh hoodies for 60 dollars. it's a fucking racket Jesus. And uh, yeah, I hate them. But, <laughs> Understandable. Yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're bastards. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, so that's probably that's probably like one thing that people don't maybe know a lot is that like, hoo hoo ha ha. Like I am a, a jokester and a, and I do jest a lot and stuff. But it's definitely like, I like I, I rep it hard. Mm-hmm. Where it's like I'm a hundred percent down to 
try my best to leave like a positive impact on it's like if you don't know anything about Iowa or if you're from Iowa then it's like I can or I can rep a little bit mm-hmm. of the state that no one really knows much about so yeah that's I'd probably say that Ooh, that one's like it, uh, like a special yeah, trait no, a special interest or no um <laughs> I, I, I've been streaming for eight years mm. and I've probably been asked everything about my life, but mm. I'm just trying to think here of something. Um, they're, they're, they're like most people know, like, you know what? Something like I am so hard on myself that you couldn't even imagine. Mm. Like the way I beat myself up is, is unhealthy sometimes. Like I am such a, a like, when it comes to other things and like, and and like games or you know streaming and everything, I'm super positive and upbeat. But when it comes to like my content, how I put out my content, the way I edit my pop content, I am, I am unhealthily a, a critic on myself. Like it wouldn't you and yeah, it's it's unhealthy. I have to, I'm I'm actually battling through it and working through it right now, hmm. um, through a couple of ways. But like it's just not it's not helping. It's not helping me. You know what I mean? Like me being. Like there, there's one thing where you can be, a, you know, you can be judging your content and making it so like you're like, okay, you know what, next time we'll do this, next time we'll, but like legit hating it and thinking like, uh, there's been a couple of times where I'm like, I'm not even going to put this video out. Like I spent six hours on it. I'm not putting it out. It's bad. And like, it's better to just throw it out there and like, what's the worst that'll happen? It, you know, the, the, the hardcore fans will, will enjoy it and it is what it is. And you know, you're, Yeah. It, it's a tough one. It's a tough battle I deal with every day. It's I, like, I understand being uh, like self-critical and mm-hmm. being your own worst mm-hmm. critic. I understand that. But mm-hmm. yeah, no. And like, it, I, I appreciate the fact that you can recognize the, the fact that you are possibly pushing it a little too far. And mm-hmm. the fact that you're working through it and, you know, you're processing it is, is healthy. And I commend you for that. Like, good job. Th- thank you. It's, thank you. It's, um, I, I, my girlfriend does almost the exact same thing. Um, she has, you know, tough days where, you know, she's incredibly down on herself and struggling, but it, it's, it's just, it's because when we look at ourselves, we look at our work, we look at the reflection in the mirror, we see the flaws, whereas mm-hmm. anyone else will see like the hard work that you'll see the end result. They'll see the beauty or, or anything related to that they don't see the flaws because they're not focusing on it so i i absolutely understand what you're saying there and again like i commend you for like well you 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 can't you can't let like like a year ago Mm. if i put out a youtube video and it did well i'd be on top of the world i would be like my day would be like this is a perfect day i'm great mood with my with my wife me and the wife are doing everything's good then i put out a video and it does really bad I've, I've just never had something like that control me so much where it controls my emotions in life yeah. and it's not healthy. It yeah. can't be healthy. It's not like, Oh, this one did bad. Okay. On to the next one. It's like, this one did bad. This is the end of my career. We're done. You know what I mean? Like no one likes me. I know it. I knew it. I knew it. No one likes me. You know, it's just like, it happens. It happens. You know, it could have just been like, it does whatever. No, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a struggle and it's, it's even a struggle that I, yeah. I, I deal with on a time to time basis. It's just, it's the negativity. It's a downward spiral and it's, it's hard to get out of it, you know, but uh, you know, like, again, like I appreciate the fact that you recognize it and you're, you're working through it and that's, that's very strong and healthy of you. So like, give yourself Thanks credit. Well. You're, you're doing fine. I won't, but don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely won't. <laughs> Yeah, that's on par, I guess. <laughs> it's who I am. It's who I am. I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying, but no. Oh man, um, I think there's probably quite a bit. Uh, we we covered one earlier in the fact that I and the, and you know I think this is probably on the table just because of conversations about mm. the band. But I, I'm quite a big fan of jazz and improvisation, and I listen to a lot of really really weird music. Right. Um, but that's kind of a low hanging fruit. I would say something that is way harder for people to know um is that i am a big poetry nerd um i have been super super attentive to 
poetry, poetics, and writing since I was young. Mm. Uh, I, it's currently a big part of what I am back in school for right now. Um, I, I kind of see poetics as a, um, a an experimental way of doing research as opposed to just like an expressive way of writing. Um, so I'm really interested in language. My shelf behind me is composed probably 60 to 70 percent of poetry. I'm a book collector. Oh. Um, I like to collect books from uh, independent presses long dead um uh, particularly from the, the united states in mid-century so i'm a bit of a nerd uh, i think is really what this is all pointing towards um and i've been trying to be better about being not embarrassed about being a uh, uh, really really into poetry so you gave me the opportunity to admit it so there you go <laughs> i i appreciate i feel closer to you already <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, I'm also a huge video game nerd to, to uh, oh yeah yeah you were admiring the, the that earlier. I'm sorry the background is so good yeah. I, I the second I got on the call I was like oh yeah so, <laughs> yeah now, just just to give you uh so like NES SNES yep. N64 N64 yeah uh, back here the computer is blocking it but uh PlayStation 2 Xbox original Xbox 360 um there's a shelf up there it's uh Dreamcast and oh, yeah. Sega CD, PlayStation 1, like, you know, I've been collecting this for years. Do you have the uh, Sonic Adventure Battle Dreamcast? Game no, on no, God, I w it's on the wish <laughs> list. My, I, know, yeah. I know it's a hard one to get. Yeah. But it probably goes to show that I knew, I, I could tell what all of those games were on your shelf. That's how much <laughs> it was. So, like, I'm with you. <laughs> right on, right on. I've mentioned this once or twice in interviews before, but, like, I am, like, really into Japanese history. Really? Uh, specifically, like, the Meiji to the uh, Showa era. Okay. Uh, so this is, like, and like, literally, I could double this interview length right now. Fair enough. Just by talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that intriguing um, to you. You're, you're, you're pulled in by that. There's a whole story. Because that, really? that's the way I see it. That to me, is like, there's this whole arc to it where uh and looking at it from a storytelling perspective uh japan is like they isolate themselves for 200 years yeah which that in and of itself that is fucking crazy said none of you are allowed in uh the dutch were famously allowed to come to trade uh what's lesser known is that the japanese specifically built an island for them like separate from japan and they weren't allowed to leave that island the dutch so they were allowed to trade but they technically weren't actually allowed to come on to japan so so they they created a basically they created a neutral zone trading post for the dutch to yeah, basically to show up and that was like this is it this is the line do not cross yeah something like that that is wild what's um, what sparked this interest uh, so I, I mean, I'd always been interested in history. It started with like World War II as a kid because we were playing like, you know, we grew up in the early 2000s and had like a computer. So we were playing, uh, like Medal of Honor and, uh, Battlefield. Uh, so that kind of started the World War II interest. Mm. Uh, and there's like so much World War II media out there. And, you know, I just, for whatever reason, I was very interested in, the Axis powers. Gotcha. Because uh, I, I like, I like seeing them. My favorite thing in history is like watching something, then build it up, and then it collapses. <laughs> um, and those are like my favorite historical figures. Yeah, have some kind of arc like that. Like all, like obviously Germany. That's an easy one to see. Yeah. Uh, Chiang Kai Shek in China. It's another very interesting one. Nationalist China in the Civil War. Uh, and then Japan's, right? Because they start as this isolated country. They have nothing. They're getting bullied as fuck by every uh, Western power. Mm. Uh, and they they kind of come to the conclusion that the only way that they're going to be able to stop getting bullied is to develop their own empire. And now that they're their own world power, they can tell other world powers, fuck off, we're not going to do this anymore. Right. Um, so that kind of starts this journey to japan slowly becoming this big big empire uh and then it climaxes with uh world war ii and uh 
the, the atomic bomb. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was, you know, that's from the storytelling perspective, but, you know, the story goes on for quite a bit after the war, too. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, you know, the repercussions and the occupation. Yeah, I don't know, just, and it, so my uh, grandfather lived in Japan, so we spent a lot of summers in Japan. Oh, okay. Uh, so I was already interested in the losers, the bad guys, because, uh, that you know, you know when you're a kid, you want to be edgy, they're the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. um, you want to go against the grain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I get it. Of course, well, like, you know, I was definitely not, like, sympathizing. Right. All that, you know, I was, you know, I was destined for uh, to study Japanese history. <laughs> yeah, it was just there. I mean, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Like, there's nothing more intriguing than watching uh, it, an entity, a power, a movement that, you know, right or wrong, uh, it's it's trajectory and then ultimately where it all ends. Like, that is, it is an I, intriguing I, story. It, it's, I think it's more interesting when it's wrong because it's like, how the fuck did they get there yeah, yeah. no absolutely <laughs> like, no absolutely it's like watching it's like driving past a car accident that just makes no sense on the, on the highway you drive past yeah, you go, how the fuck exactly. did that happen yeah so i get it and that's a that's an awesome answer